Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I'm at London Gatwick Airport to fly to Dubai on Emirates and I'm going to fly first class. Now I don't have a seat on this airplane, I have a suite. Now you might be thinking, wow, I bet this is going to be expensive. It's not as expensive as you might think. I've heard some people paying almost 10 to 15,000 pounds for one of these seats. I did not pay that and I'll tell you how I saved with my booking a little bit later on. So I'm going to be flying on the largest passenger plane in the world, the A380. It also has a bar and a shower, yes, for first class passengers only. Now the booking also comes with a chauffeur but that was slightly out of my area. I don't think he would come to Great Yarmouth to pick me up. I think it was only like 60 miles out of the airport. So let's see if Emirates first class is as good as what some people make out. Let's go check in. I have no idea why I'm checking in though. I did see it flash up just a minute ago. I think it's this way. Here's check-in. Now what's crazy is that you can take up to 70 kilograms on board with a first class ticket. So typical that I'm in again for three days and don't actually need that much stuff. Travelling light. Hello. Hello, good afternoon, thank you for waiting. That's okay. You are going to yeah. check in? That's for checking, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Boarding card, you've got passport okay, so security and lunch invitation. Well, all checked in, so now I've just got to get through security as always. And then we will check out the Emirates, f well I don't think it's a first class lounge, it's a, more like a business class lounge here at Gatwick. Apparently it's not overly that exciting, you can't get any treatments in there like you can in some Emirates lounges. But you can get lots of food and champagne. Be rude not to, wouldn't it? Well if you didn't know, Gatwick North Terminal is basically EasyJet Central. In fact there's just a couple of TUI flights going and the only one Emirates flight which is just there, 825 Dubai. So they do premium security now for eight pounds. Why would you bother paying that? So I normally have a look around the shops, but um, as I haven't overly got that long, I'm gonna head straight to the Emirates Lounge and see what it's like. It feels like every time I come through Gatwick, it's chain. I'm sure they've still got the weather spoons in the far corner. It is a, a pretty big terminal. It's bigger than the South Terminal. Well, I think it is. The lady said it was near WH Smith and there's always more than one WH Smith in the North Terminal at the airport. Interesting comfy seating. A bit more modern. I like little lounges. I remember coming to a lounge up here once before. I think it was the number one lounge. Didn't really rate it that much. There's quite a few here. Also quite surprising Emirates have a lounge here because they only fly tw twice a day to Dubai from Gatwick. So you wouldn't have thought they'd be much cool for it. Oh, it's downstairs. Doors closed. Doors open. Hello. Yes, fine, thanks. Wow, all Rolex. Those of magazines, I can hear water running. Nice little water feature. I don't think there's any windows in here. So food, all complimentary. That's okay. Thank you. Check it out. They have a business center. Straight out of the 90s, noughties, where these would all have computers to go on the internet. Actually, there is still a couple of computers. I feel bad saying this, but this lounge is really dull. They've obviously spent a lot of money on the furniture because it's all leather, but there's like only two TVs. There's no real atmosphere. The food is pretty bland. I asked if there was like snacks. There wasn't any, but there is champagne. I guess that's one good thing. 
Let me go and check my email. Or maybe go on YouTube. Oh yeah, talking of the internet as well. The Wi-Fi in here is ridiculously slow. Well, the showers. They are basically like a, a premium in shower. You do have a heated towel out, which is not on. You can't get many in this shower though. Probably only about two people. Now, of course, there is a shower on board, or they call it the spa. Um, and I've got to wait to have a shower really at 40,000 feet, right? If I ever fly Emirates from Gatwick to Dubai ever again in the future, I don't think I'll be rushing back to that lounge. It was a little bit depressing. The staff looked miserable as well. Time to board. There's a massive queue, but I guess your first class, you should be able to go to the front. Priority. We'll find out. The A380 holds a lot of people, hence why the queue is ridiculously long. A lot of these people are going onwards to Australia, I think, as well. Here you go. Can't be the first one boarding, can I? Can't be that lucky. You just about see it. No real signage. I'm sure it is this way though. So first class passengers get to board a separate entrance right at the top of the plane, obviously. Hi, yeah. Hi, welcome aboard. How Thank are you, you today? Fine, thanks. My colleague was going to do a suite. Lovely. Thank you very much. Well, there's no overhead bin, so this is my suite. But what's great is this actually shuts, so it's like a hotel room in the sky. Is that lovely? Oh, thank you. So they've just given me some champagne. I didn't want too much, two reasons. I don't want to get too tipsy because I kind of want to take all this in. And second of all, they give you the better stuff when you're up in the air. This is a basic champagne. They give you the Don Perignon, um, or whatever it's called, when you're in the air, some law or something. Normally when I get on a flight, I normally leave it to the last minute, but as I'm going first class, I thought I'm getting on here as soon as possible and making every minute count. Because when you go to Dubai from London, um, it's not as long as coming back. So I think it's about six hours, 50 minutes, but it might even shave off some of that. Although I hear the weather in Dubai is not great when we land. It's weird being up here on the A380, it doesn't actually feel that big. It feels like a, just a, a small kind of like commercial airline. It's not until you go downstairs, obviously, in economy, and then you realise just how big the aircraft is. From up here, though, the A380 looks, well, cosy. The showers are that way, apparently. Look at it's massive down there. We'll have a look down there later. It's crazy how many windows I've got. One, two, three, and a pop-up bar, which is complimentary. White chocolate hazelnuts. I've got some still water, fizzy water. I've got a glass. Some more nuts, more fizzy water, and more still water. Just look at the leg room that I've got. I mean, my coat is, is down there. This is where my bag is. I mean, look how much room I've got. The carpet is nice and clean. There's my pajamas for later. The entrance to my suite. And there's my coat. Okay, oh, lovely. In Arabic coffee. Oh, yes, please. Oh, plain and orange. For the orange, actually. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Orange date. Now, I'm actually glad that I didn't have too much food in the lounge because I'm saving myself for the flight. Not a big fan on dates, but as dates go, that is really nice. Let's try the coffee. I've noticed one thing this sweet's missing, unless there is something here. That's like a little bin for your rubbish. Loved how they bought the dates out though, in that really polished wooden box. So we've got about 10 minutes before departure, and as it's quiet, because um, when we get airborne as well, you get lots of noise and you probably can't hear me as well on the microphone. I'll give you the cabin tour now, actually, whilst I'm there on the ground, it's probably a little bit quieter. Absolutely love the lamp, so elegant. And it's like, considering how old 
this aircraft is and these suites you know look at that they do keep them in good nick love the little touches for the lamps got a little goodie box with sweets there's little vitamin drinks there's more nuts there's chocolate there's jelly beans there's more nuts and there's some crisps these are real not fake you've got a little vanity kit here as well so if you want to do moisturizing and makeup there's pillow mist there i think that's ready for bed but nice little mirror there I'll put that down for the moment and then of course you've got the huge tv is this touch screen oh it is but if i don't want to touch it i've got a tablet here and then there's another tablet there probably don't really need all those tablets it's a little bit overkill love this golden wooden look it reminds me actually of staying in the Burj Al Arab in Dubai which I stayed in last year Ooh, thank you very much no it sounds crazy they've just given me a hot towel and it's ridiculously hot Ooh. Ooh, that was refreshing not quite sure what all these buttons do that's the dim oh that's the lights for dimming that's off that just says press oh right so that's what that does there's the cool bell look at that just like a hotel bedside table a notepad and a pen I wonder if I'm allowed to actually take this wow that is really nice it's good quality I will be taking that if I'm allowed to should hope so for the price we've got an eye mask down here we've got headphones some pretty expensive headphones safety card and then there's the ice magazine look at the suede though how it's all brushed it's so lovely this seat is huge there's all the um, bedding this obviously turns into a bed later on this cushion is so comfy mixture between firm and soft really like that but i mean there is so much room i remember when i was um upper class with virgin atlantic and the seat didn't feel that wide or big but this is impressive i know on the new first class suites i think they have like a, a seat belt but these are the old-fashioned ones so when i have my food later that's your table <laughs> there's these buttons on here which I don't know what they do is there a massage function on this chair that'd be nice if there was there's a little light over here and also my air vent is here because there's nothing in the top so your air vent is basically from the side here and down here as well and like you think to yourself well you can see someone else behind you you can't mirror there and there's also a mirror in the front it makes it feel even more private Welcome to we're about to show you the safety features of this Emirates flight. So you can have the map on there if you want, and then you can watch the TV on there. Or you can do it vice versa, I think. I know this sounds odd. I love a window seat, but you feel so far away from the actual window on an A380 because the depth of them. And then when you're in first class, you feel even further away. But you do get a unique perspective out the window because you get to see three windows all at once. I can also see the cameras if they're working. Are they working? Quality isn't very good though, is it? For some reason we've stopped not moving. There's a plane right there. Just a taxiway, it looks like a, a runway. Now I don't know whether it's because I'm right at the front always the a380 but it didn't feel like we was hardly going any speed whatsoever and we were already lifting up that was like the smoothest takeoff ever wow check these out don't judge me I'm gonna watch Barbie Wow, 
these headphones are like noise cancelling as well like literally can't hear anything I can't hear anything because I can't turn it on I'll watch a little bit of this and then we'll order some dinner oh lovely thank you well I've never had Dom Perignon champagne before I know it can be quite expensive I apologise if you are a champagne connoisseur, but it kind of all tastes very similar. I mean, it it varies in taste, but not going to lie though, it is nice. I don't think I'll be buying a bottle of that anytime soon though. Just look at the menu. So I can order from this whenever I want. So I can order what I want when I want. Just looking at the menu. It says caviar. I think I might have to try that. I want to get my money's worth, definitely. And I think for the main, I'm going to go for the roast beef. This actually comes with a mini Yorkshire pudding. Wow. Just dressed the table. I'm sat like I'm eating in a five-star restaurant. It's amazing. White linen. I've got some Melba toast here. Some lemon prawns in there. And the caviar will be on its way. But let's try this amuse bouse. The prawns are in here. Oh, just one. There's two. Should I press the button for privacy? That is amazing. The only thing I'm gutted about is the flight to Dubai tonight is around about six hours. And I've got to try and enjoy, well, and film everything. And try to get some sleep. It's going to be hard. If you're going to spend the money to do first class, do a longer flight than five hours because it's really hard to squeeze everything in because I want to enjoy the food, I want to enjoy the champagne, I want to go to the bar, I want to have a shower and I want to sleep and I want to watch a movie. Can I do all that in five hours? It's going to be tight. So I have tried caviar, well probably three or four tiny little bubbles of caviar before. I've never tried it like this. Apparently this mother of pearl spoon is supposed to bring out the taste. So. So we've got a selection of finely chopped onion, chives, grated egg, sour cream, and lemon with a Melba toast. I wonder how much actually that's worth, but that's quite a lot. Here we go. I can see why people like caviar. It's like eating, I don't know, um, raw fish, but this is smoother and softer and creamier. So I'm gonna try it with a bit of grated egg put some creme fraiche on there. I'm not gonna lie though, it's best eating it just like this. The only thing I would say is there's quite a lot there and I don't wanna waste it because it's probably a lot of money, but I don't wanna be sick at the same time. So dinner is served. I've gone for the roast beef, Yorkshire pudding and green beans with very tiny amount of gravy. There's hardly anything in there. Here we go. <laughs> they even asked me how I want it. Well done or medium. I said medium. Let's cut into it and see what it looks like. I've never ever eaten beef like this at 30,000 feet. Wow. I feel sorry for the Yorkshire pudding though. Poor little thing. So dessert is here. I've got to just double check what I've gone for. So I've gone for a chocolate panna cotta served with miso caramel sauce and white chocolate curd. They also wanted to know if I wanted some dessert wine or a decongestion. I think that's what they call it, right? So I decided to try, because I know it's quite expensive, the Hennessy Paradise, if I've said that right. <laughs> that is strong stuff. Oh, I didn't realize this, but the seat can move further forward. They always say your taste buds change at 38,000 feet, but I can taste everything and it is just lovely. The past 15, 20 minutes, I kind of forgot that I was at 38,999 feet in the air. I tell you what though, you do get your money's worth. I mean, there is so much food to have. You can drink and eat as much as you want. And then after dinner, 
the lovely hostess came round and gave me a choice of chocolates to eat. I don't know if I can fit any more in before having a sleep, but... So, I'm gonna have a shower. Before I do that, I haven't shown you my free amenity bag that you get that is jam-packed full of stuff. There's loads of stuff here from Bulgari. There's a little bag, there's loads of it. This bag is Bulgari as well. I hope I say that right. Ooh, fragrance. I won't spray that now. Cleansing towel, hydrating body emulsion, lip balm, an aftershave balm. And there's still more in here as well. Gillette, the best a man can get. I've got a shaver. Let's keep going. Dental kit. And then for smelly pits, for a runny nose, and a hairbrush. I tell you what, this is one nice travel bag. Like four hours and 55 minutes until we land in Dubai. I'm literally having to rush everything. We're gonna go and check out the bar, and then I will show you the shower. There's two showers on board, and we're upstairs on the A380. There's one to the left and there's one to the right. But before we go and check them out, let's go and check out the bar. Look at that, and you can order your champagne, any food you want as well up here. There's not many people here now because I think a lot of them have gone to bed. So we can see where we are. Some food. Love the little seating area, it's really nice. Cake. <laughs> Thank you very much. So there is another bar up here, and the two showers are one shower there, and then one shower there, and then downstairs, I think that's economy. So not only is this the shower for first class, it's also the toilet. Check this out, right? Ready? They've even got a toilet seat cover on there for me as well. It comes with all these products that I can use, they change this for every person. So I've got body wash, facial wash, shampoo, conditioner, a comb, all these products, a fresh towel. By the way, all these flowers are real. Look at that, there's even a little jug of water in there. And you can see the Dubai skyline in the background. Can you believe I'm 39,000 feet in the air? This is absolutely huge. I'll tell you how many people can fit in the shower in a minute. First of all, the sink though, this is massive with this huge big mirror, drying your hands with these tiny little flannels. And I've noticed as well that when one person has been in here, there's a lady outside that her sole job is just to refresh this and to keep this clean after every single person comes in here to go to the toilet or to have a shower. So when anyone new comes in here to, to use the loo or use the shower, they still get that amazing first class experience. Now that's good. So up here I can still see where I am on the sky map. There's a hair dryer. There's more amenities as well. There's loads of stuff. Even the toilet roll is pointed. So how many people can I fit in this shower? That's the question. It's actually bigger than you think. It actually goes back even further than I thought. I thought it was just gonna be this tiny little shower here, but you can actually sit down. I mean, at a push, you can get one person sitting down and two people standing in here. So it's as simple as pressing this button here, the temperature there, and then it tells me how long I've got. Apparently this is five minutes. There's a fresh little flower in here. It's pretty good. Let's just shut the door. The fact that you can comfortably sit in here, well, I guess there's only one thing to do, and that's try out the shower. Well, a bit of turbulence in the shower. What's the situation if we get bad turbulence and I'm in the shower? And um, I almost forgot my pajamas, which I need to go back and get, because otherwise that'd have been very awkward, me stepping out of the shower and, yeah. So, I get slippers, pajamas, and this very nice Emirates bag to put them in. Let's get in the shower before we get any more turbulence. And they've got a soft bath mat for when you come out. My five minutes start. 
make sure it's not hot. Pressing the button. Well, I'm trying to figure out why the shower's not going on. I'm pressing the button. I can actually call for camera crew. That'd be a bit awkward. Um, this is embarrassing. Okay, so they've moved me to the other shower. I've got five minutes. I better be quick and enjoy this. I'm currently over Bucharest at the minute. I'm having a shower at 39,000 feet. This is crazy. And it's pretty good as well. Okay, pajamas on. Had to go for medium size. By the way, the ones I thought beaded. Amazing. Check out these slippers. So comfy. Time to get into bed. Oh wow. This is so cozy. This is one big long bed. Turn some lights off. Good night. I'll see you in a couple of hours. That's all I've got. By the way, you should also check out the ceiling. Isn't that pretty? Anyway, no night. I would say morning. I think I had about 20 minutes sleep. And then I was like, do you know what? I'm just gonna get up. Because you know when you need to sleep, because you know you have to sleep, you just can't. Nothing to do with the bed, it was comfy. Obviously you've got the cupboards and the, the walls that restrict your arms when you're moving around, but lengthwise this bed, um, and the softness of it is really comfy. So it's currently 1 a.m. UK time, 5 a.m. in Dubai time, and we land in two hours. It's told that you've got to order any food or drink you want an hour and a half um, before we land, which is quite surprising actually, because I would have thought they would still be like serving stuff like that until up until, I don't know, maybe half an hour before we land, but. So yeah, if I want breakfast, I kind of have to have it in a minute. I've also been quite lucky in the fact that there's only, I think, two people in first class. There's only me and one other person in this first class at the minute. And that person's all the way over the other side. It's still not light outside, but I've ordered breakfast, starting with good old cup of tea. Oh, I need to put this in there. Let me give you some shortbread as well. I think I can see the sunrise. Starting off with some cornflakes for this morning. The only other option they have is like a, an omelette. I don't think I've ever had breakfast cereal on a plane before. Well, coming into land, I think it's gonna be rather bumpy. It's actually raining in Dubai, can you believe that? I've still got my slippers on and my pajama bottoms, but the seatbelt sign is on, um, so I'm gonna have to kind of change at the airport. I can't walk through Dubai airport in my pajama bottoms. I'll have to do it before I leave the flight. I've never landed in a storm before. I just saw lightning out the window as well. I don't know if you can see on the camera there, but the rain is absolutely lashing down. See, I can't see anything out the window. Being in first class doesn't make it any less scary, I tell you. Oh my God, once again, I didn't get that on the camera, but the lightning actually hit the plane. so cool a bit of weather it was on the news how bad the weather was going to be in Dubai when we landed it's just typical and the worst thing is is we're circling in and out of this thunderstorm so we can land
So the stewardess told me that you're not allowed to film the rain in Dubai or whilst driving or... Yeah, I didn't understand what she meant. Thank you. going to find my luggage. There's so many luggage belts. Wow, that was scary coming in. There was so much lightning and every time I tried to obviously capture it, it wouldn't work because obviously it was over. But lightning at a few thousand feet sounds different. It pops. It's very strange noises. Anyway, I'm glad I'm on the ground. Okay, so it's finally stopped raining. I'm at the hotel. By the way, if you want to see where I'm staying, make sure you subscribe to see the next video. It was quite a bit of a journey to get here from the airport, actually, through flooded roads in Dubai, I'm not going to lie. Until you can hear the thunder still going on. Yikes. Now, the flight was expensive, but did I get my value for money? Kind of, I guess. I mean, I tried to eat as much food as I possibly could and, and take advantage of all the amenities that I could. The flight to Dubai on first class on a saver ticket cost me £3,200. Now, compared to what some people have paid online, I think actually that's not too bad. I'm also going to be flying back on business class for a lot less than that, and you can see that video very soon. Tell me what you thought in the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you next time.